Challenger Houston, your go for nominal ohms one. APU shut down on time. And that uh, Ohms 1, Dave, refers to the firing of some little rocket engines which will uh, send it into the orbit or to a higher orbit. And, uh, and there'll be another Ohms firing later today, which will... Nine minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, Challenger now maneuvering to Ohms 1 burn attitude. Using the uh, two 6,000-pound thrust engines, Ohms 1 will be posi-grade. Moving Challenger uh, forward and higher on her flight path. The Ohms 1 burn you hear them talking about from Capcom is the orbital maneuvering system 1. The two large engines at the back of the shuttle, and they'll be fired for 2 minutes and 31 seconds to actually place the shuttle in an elliptical orbit of 160 miles up. Meanwhile, at Kennedy Space Center, the pad has been burnt out and blown out, but it will soon be prepared for the next launch of the next shuttle mission in several months' time, depending on the success of the turnaround after Challenger. But right now, Challenger is approaching 52 miles up, going to the edge of space, and preparing for the burn of the orbital maneuvering systems engine, which will place it in the first elliptical orbit. Houston, uh, 10 minutes, 42 seconds, mission elapsed. That's a firm. We've got about 30 seconds, script. Okay. Looks like you're going to get the good bit of this. We've got a nice burn going. And the OMS okay, is burning right. now, There's pushing the shuttle further out into its first here. orbit for this mission of the Challenger, the second mission in space of the Challenger, the seventh mission of the space shuttle. What do you hear live from CNN Headline News? Thank you, Peter. Another top news. They have one half of their orbit. Uh, it, it, it begins the process of circularizing a 160-mile-high orbit. Uh, later in that path, they have to burn the engines again, and that's when they will have circularized. So that's the next big task, is what we call OMS-1 and OMS-2. OMS standing for Orbital Maneuvering System. And uh, once they've done that, they're in a stable attitude, and they'll be in orbit, and that's when they'll, the next task is to open up the payload bay doors. That allows them to um, get the radiators working that are attached to those doors, and that dissipates the heat that is generated by all the electronics and computers and that sort of thing that are on the shuttle. Once they've done that, uh, they're ready to go. Uh, the next step today, the, the, the only other big task awaiting them today is the, the launch, the deploy of the satellite, the uh, PAMD burn and the Telesat deploy. All right, thank you so much. Brian Welch, NASA spokesman, for keeping us up to date and filling us in on what's taking place this morning. Very exciting launch. Just six days from now, you know, the shuttle is scheduled to return to the Cape, about five miles from where it just took off, as NC's Lynn Brown reports. We mark the unofficial touchdown time at uh, five days, zero hours, 23 minutes, 42 seconds. When Challenger returned from its maiden voyage, it was to Edwards Air Force Base and a natural dry lake bed with plenty of room for error. But bringing Challenger home from its second mission will be... T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We go for main engine start. We have main engine start and ignition and liftoff, liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. We lose contact for protracted uh, periods because uh, in the future we're going to have that complete space-oriented satellite communication system where we'll have virtually non-stop coverage, is that right? You're right, Kevin. Uh, right now we're still dependent upon the ground stations. Uh, they're going over Bermuda now, but uh, eventually we'll have enough satellites up there to almost cover the entire orbit about the Earth. Has there been any problem with the, uh, the TDRA satellite that uh, ran into some difficulty? It's, uh, I think it's, it's just about in place now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Last I heard, it was very close, uh, within uh, a few miles of being there. But then, uh, because this is a very complicated satellite, uh, there are some very elaborate communications checkout procedures that have to be followed. And this will take some period of time before it's actually in operational condition. So when do we expect to uh, hear from, from the orbiter again? When will we uh, be in touch with the crew? They should be over Bermuda about now and... Uh, any second? Any second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so far, as uh, uh, it's gone uh, perfectly smoothly. 
Um, though one of the questions that's going to be looked at perhaps more closely than before is the question of motion sickness. And, and we're very fortunate to have you because uh, you've been up there for uh, a protracted period during a, a Skylab. How long were you there? Skylab uh, 10 years ago was a 59-day flight for me. It was about, uh, about two months. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this is something that is still a bit of a mystery. I don't know what we call it, motion sickness or space sickness. I don't think we've even found a word for it yet. Um, anyway, uh, we have a special report uh, from Atlanta on this particular phenomenon, which is going to be studied very closely, and we'll be talking a lot about it throughout this mission.